Now, the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NSFAS, proposed funding guidelines have sparked some outrage. The scheme wants students to pass 75% of their modules to continue to receive funding. The South African Union of Students has rejected the proposal. It says this policy change will negatively affect the poor, and NSFAS must consider revising the proposed percentage. The union says SRCs at all campuses will be making their own submissions. NSFAS says students who fail to meet its requirements will be able to appeal the decision. All right, so let's speak to the South African Union of Students uh, meeting with NSFAS, bringing together SRFE, SRCs uh, to meet with NSFAS. We're joined by the spokesperson of the union, Asive Dlanjwa. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. Firstly, there's been a lot of confusion about this 75% uh, pass rate. As a result, I think a lot of people are outraged where they might not have been. I think NSFAS could have communicated better that 75% pass rate uh, pertains to courses passed, not every student has to get distinctions. Uh, do you agree that this could have been communicated better? Uh, good evening, Francis, to you and uh, yeah, the viewers, uh, and thank you for having us. Uh, I think uh, number one, uh, which we'll speak to, there's no amount of communication, clear communication, that would have made uh, that any more acceptable. Uh, yes, of course, we can make the distinction that it's not 75% average. Uh, that one must meet a 75% average in their past month, but it is the amount of modules that one is doing. For instance, if you're doing 10 modules, you would have to pass 75% of those, which effectively means uh, that's about, uh, that's eight modules that you'd have to pass out of the 20, so out of the 10 for you to carry on and receive funding. But we will speak, uh, I will speak about it during this interview, our position on that. Uh, but uh, as I'm saying, I don't think there's an, any amount of clearer communication that could have made okay. uh, this proposition by NESFAS any more acceptable. All right, so, so you uh, really don't like the proposal. Firstly, how does the 75% uh, pass rate for, for the modules compare to what students have to achieve right now uh, so that we can compare? Uh, currently, uh, students would have to, uh, would have to meet 50% uh, uh, pass requirement, at least. In fact, let, let us maybe clarify this. Students, if students had been doing 10 modules, uh, they would have to pass in a year, they would have to pass five of those modules for them to qualify for funding in the next year. Now, and, 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 and uh, that is what we wanted to go back to. And in fact, that is what it, it currently is. But in the, in the proposed guidelines, that it will move to 75%. Now, we completely reject that with the absolute contempt it deserves. In fact, it really is just a ruse to mark, at least to cover the maleficence and the corruption uh, and the looting of money that has gone on at NESFAS for many years unabated. Uh, because uh, this is just a, 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 a way to systematically exclude the majority of students that are in the main poor and from the working class. Yeah. To show you how ridiculous this is, Francis, let me t you see in universities they have what they call progression rules, meaning you would have to meet certain requirements for you to progress to the next year of your study. Now, those progression rules as we speak in universities, uh, for instance, uh, most of them would be around, say, about 50%. If you had passed about 50% of your modules, you'd be allowed to move on to the next year. Of course, there are many technicalities, such as prerequisite modules that you would have had to pass, etc. Issues of will you still be able to complete within the minimum prescribed period, yeah. at least the maximum prescribed period, which we call a residency period, etc. But to show how ridiculous this is, now, when you do not meet certain academic requirements, what happens to you is what we call academic exclusion. The university chases you away and say that you are not fitness, you, you're somewhat not fit to do this course, and therefore they will remove you from the course. Now, there's also something we call a, a, a financial exclusion. This is in the event that a student has not been able to uh, pay, uh, then they would be financially excluded. Now, what government should do and what makes sense to any a, a, a person uh, who has common sense is that you would align your, because you're, these are public institutions and this is public money that we're speaking about. This, are not, this is not a private donor. 
you would align your funding requirements with that of the academic requirements. So how does a student, let me give you an example. A student was doing Okay, okay we're running out of time. They, so, so are you saying the, the academic requirements um, are less than 50%, than 50% 50 or less? So, so you think NSFAS is being crazy by raising the bar even higher than that? Uh, let me quickly... Uh, put uh, an argument to you that, that you sometimes hear, uh, that if NSFAS uh, pays for, for students who take very long to um, continue to, to complete their degrees um, and, and aren't really putting in uh, the, the work required, then it could run out of money. That, that um, afflicts other poor students who, who want to get uh, NSFAS funding and, and it affects us all. Do you have any sympathy for that argument? No, that argument is a crazy argument, Francis, uh, for a few reasons. Number one, let me give, what is that? First of all, what is a long time? Uh, because universities say to us, based on data, based on research, they don't thumb suck this. All universities have what we call a, an N plus a, a time to finish your degree, meaning the minimum prescribed period would be the N, which if it's three years, is three years, and then they give you an additional two years. Uh, normally, they use N plus two for you to complete your degree. By the way, these are the states, Francis. Let me tell you, in South Africa, only 22% of students are able to complete their three-year degree in three years. And only 39% are able to complete their three-year degrees in four years. And a large 56% is able to complete a three-year degree in six years. So effectively, what you are going to do, if we use that lazy argument, it means that by this virtue alone, at least... 78% of students will be excluded straight from the system. Yeah. And these are students that will go on to graduate. Majority of them go to graduate. So you, I am telling you that only 22% would typically meet the requirement that NESFAS wants. So I use, and these are poor, and the reason the students are failing, I must say this before our time ends, is that it is not for the lack of intellectual capacity. Yeah. It is because there are not adequate systems to support them. As I speak with you right now, majority of the students for 2021 have never seen their lecturers face to face before COVID, even when the lecturers were there, these were the numbers, because these numbers I'm giving you were before COVID, when lecturers were standing in front of them. Now lecturers are not standing in front of them. Majority, thousands of students as speak, do not have their devices. They yeah. do not have data. How are these students going to be able to meet that requirement when the adequate support is not provided for them to meet that, to meet the, the, I, that requirement? I agree with you, and we can look at education at a primary school and, and high school level. Um, many students not, not prepared uh, for, for what they're heading into so so NSFAS, I mean, how much, uh, how much scope does NSFAS have uh, to push these proposals through? Are they listening to you? Do you believe as, as students uh, you can stop this from happening? We hope that they are listening to us, Francis, as, we, as you very had already alluded. On Monday, we met uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the scheme, uh, with SRCs, and they made their presentation, and we gave them a vehement rejection of their presentation. So we hope they listen to us. But in the event that they do not listen to us, Francis, I want to promise you, as surely as the sun shall rise tomorrow, that there is no single institution that will open next year for as long as the poor and the working class will be kept outside those gates through such uh, measures. All right, thank you for your time tonight. We'll follow those engagements. Uh, these are proposals uh, put forward by NSFAS, and you can see uh, strongly opposed by the National uh, Union for Students, the spokesperson there, Asiva Dlanjwa.